Richland um, Creek, Monette, where are you? Nicole has the contact. Mm -hmm. yep. The Cumberland yep. we'll River sure Compact and the Nature Conservancy. There's Terry there. And we're super excited about uh, the mural project that we've been working uh, with a number of community partners on. And uh, I didn't know there were going to be cameras. Yeah, I would have worn a tie. Probably not. Um, but together, the uh, National Waterways Consortium launched the Revive campaign. Revive is really about awareness of the value of our natural resources. And today, we're really here to celebrate the value of Browns Creek, the natural resource that's right here, as is represented by Moby's mural on this wall, which is uh, an interesting way for us as the conservation and environmental community to connect beyond our tr traditional partners through art. And so that's really what we're doing here today. You know, wherever you see water flowing, in this area it's going to Browns Creek. And it's a part of that watershed. It's a part of that natural resource. Whether it's flowing down the side of the street or in a small, what some people might call a ditch, but we don't <laughs> use the D word. That's a bad word because it devalues those systems. Every bit of that, every bit of that is a part of this collection system for Browns Creek and in this case the Cumberland River because we're in the Cumberland uh, Basin. You know, I grew up in Nashville. I was uh, here in the 60s, and it's not the Nashville I grew up in. Imagine that. It has changed radically. Really, in the past 10 years, it's changed radically. So all of these small streams and tributaries that you see flowing in from even what's running along the side of the road, these things are a part of that system. And it's so important that we protect those and work to restore them and conserve them. And as everybody, they gave me these talking points. I'm sort of on them. I'm not exactly. <laughs> You're not on the talking they are, points. I know, I'm not on We're the talking points. We're doing great. But everybody knows what I'm going to say, or all the guys in the consortium know what I'm going to say. If you want to do one thing to help the health of Browns Creek and the Cumberland River, the source of our drinking water for hundreds of thousands of people, it's going to be to what? Plant a tree. Plant a tree. Because trees absorb that storm water. They send it back up into the sky. And divert your storm water downspout to your, the trees. Send the downspout water to the trees. Make sure you plant it November to March but plant a tree, plant it on a creek bank. It's critical to the stream health. It's critical to the stream health. Um, and you know, while we're here celebrating uh, this incredible mural, it's important to note that if that's all we do and we don't take some action, then we're not getting where we need to be. Certainly awareness is an important part of it, but action is the next step. That's one of the things that the Revive campaign and the National Waterways Consortium is committed to, is moving this ball forward, moving it forward. And so I want to also just take a minute to thank uh, Mark, who I'll introduce in just a second. He's over here. There he is, Mark Deutschman. This is his, uh, it's his wall, I'll say. It's also his door. Please read the door. It's uh, it's a good piece of, 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 of educational material for folks to look at and see as they admire the mural. I want to, um, you know, thank the community that's come out for this. All of you guys, you can make a difference. And so it's really important. And then the, the, the final thing that I would say, actually, it's not the final thing. Don't forget to sign up. See, I'm off my talking points. There's a sign-up sheet in by the food. There's some incredible food in there, by the way. I didn't realize we were going to get dinner, but we're going to get dinner. Um, there's a <laughs> sign-up sheet in there. Please make sure to sign up there. But, you know, great cities have great rivers. And in Nashville and Davidson County, we've got the Cumberland River. The city was literally settled by the river because that was the transportation corridor water it's the substance of life you can't do without it you guys 
make sure you sign up. We'll be pushing more information out to you through the Revive campaign and mm, plant a tree November to March. Don't get outside those days for planting. So I want to introduce real quick Mark Deutschman, who's going to come up and say a few words or not. Not. Stand there. No, come on up. Um, thank you, Mark, for your support and letting us uh, use the wall. Big hand for Mark Deutschman, Village Real Estate. So I want to say hello to the artist. Um, this beautiful, beautiful mural. The core is the new edge. Um, some years ago, my wife and I went through a course called Real Speaking, and we had to do a vision board before we spoke our vision. And my vision board had a beautiful urban scene, lots of cities in the middle, and it was surrounded by trees, mountains, and rivers. And this is very much like my vision board, and I can't believe that you just painted it. So I believe personally that humans are better stewards when they live in cities and when we live in urban communities. And so for years with Village Real Estate and Core Development, we've been thinking about how to bring people back to the core. Um, you may know that 30 years ago, as a central business district, we really didn't allow housing downtown. We had moved out for years and years and years. And it took quite a while for us to come back down to the core. When my partners and I started working in the 12 South neighborhood in the mid 90s, 50% of these buildings on the street were vacant or semi-vacant or underutilized. And it really wasn't a, a robust community that it is today. I bought a house over on Carruthers Avenue and I had five houses around me that were boarded up. So it's a, it was a different conversation. We were talking about re-inhabiting neighborhoods. So as we bring people back together, we have to think about mobility and transportation. So I'm gonna divert for a minute to Greenways before we get to the Blue Ways and Watershed. Um, I've been the president of Greenways for National for the past six and a half years. I just stepped down to serve on the Greenways Commission. And we've now laid down 88 miles of paved trails and we've connected to most of the watersheds in Davidson County. We're coming to the city now. We're thinking about the urban core. We've got a new 22 mile loop that will bring the city that's underway with the first section of a 440 Greenway. We'll use the 440 infrastructure to create a connection that connects Charlotte Pike to West End, to Hillsborough Road, to Granny White, over to Franklin Road, and then it connects to Browns Creek. And so it'll connect to Browns Creek and it'll head right down this river here into the city. <laughs> go down to, to Cumberland River and then down to Rolling Mill Hill. So it's great an opportunity for people in this community and that community and then the underserved communities in our city to actually move and have ac you know, access to parks and greenways. This urban greenway system actually opens up a lot of opportunities, not only for, I know that when we did the Richland Creek Greenway, it brought eyes to the prize that really has cleaned up that creek. I think it, this, will have a, this will bring an opportunity with the first section being run, done right now at the fair park, for people to see what's really going on with the ground street and how it's going to invite people to see how wide the river is going to be in our community. So I'm really um, I'm proud of the urban greenway system. I'm, I'm proud of what's happening here. And I'm, I'm really a, I'm a kayak resistant. Maybe someday we can all ride down the river again. <laughs> I'm going to pass this off to whoever. Mikhail. Mikhail. Mikhail from Mikhail. Mikhail. Mikhail.
starting a great program with the compact called DPAVE, and um, that is literally altering the way that we use the land. And we would love for um, uh, you all, someone in Browns Creek, to take us up on this idea. Uh, we have a grant, so we can do it at no charge to you all, and we'll sell it. <laughs> it's really easy. Uh, yeah, basically, as Mikhail said, um, we do have some funding that's opened up, and it's specifically on uh, cleaning up Browns Creek, right, restoring Browns Creek. So it's kind of got a lot of moving parts. It's got a mix of, like, bank stabilization. It's got some restoration. It's got a lot of tree plantings, but there are a couple other opportunities. Uh, as Mikhail said, be paid. We actually have uh, some funding to actually convert a dilapidated old parking lot into, like, a green space. So if anybody... Uh, kind of has anything in the back of their mind of a locale that can work well locally or if they know a local business owner that might be interested in something like that, uh, we would love to uh, partner with you on that. We also have within this uh, funding uh, pet waste station. So did you guys know uh, we've been told 95% of E. coli that's found in our streams, not from le uh, leaky infrastructure, not from cattle, it's actually from canine, it's from our pets, not picking up our pet waste. So we're having a big endeavor to try to get pet waste stations out to the watershed. So we are looking for three more locales for pet waste stations. Each locale will get a uh, like a 10,000 bag pallet with it. So we've got some funding, we've got some opportunities. Uh, I'd love to talk to anybody that's uh, interested in taking us up on that or any local business owners, uh, anything like that. I'd be, be glad to talk to anybody. Thank you, Will. Okay, I want us all to thank Moby for this incredible mural that... Yeah. Yeah.